as you've heard me say on this channel, ERVs are the ventilation uh, strategy that we need to use in very airtight homes. And more and more people are choosing to build airtight because they're starting to see the benefit and really want that. Now, when you're using an ERV and you have this balanced ventilation, and by the way, that is the reason that you get an ERV is because it's balanced. It's an equalizing ventilator, not because of the energy efficiency. Um, we hardly ever talk about energy efficiency on this channel, as a matter of fact, because the physics, chemistry, microbiology are so much more complicated than just like how much money we're spending on our bills. So when you were talking about balanced, some people out there are saying, hey, you know what? What if we unbalance it a little bit so that fill in the blank, whatever it is that you're looking for. In some cases, you're like, hey, I want to make sure that I know where all the air coming into my home is coming from. And then I don't get any accidental air leakages, even with a very airtight home like the one that I'm talking to you from, you'll have a little bit of air leakage when the wind blows a certain way or when the HVAC system unbalances the house in a certain way. It's pretty engineered, but it's real life. And there's like a little bit of floppiness. If you want it to be perfect, perfect, you can do things like they do in hospitals. So like an operating suite is always pressurized so that no air from any rooms around it in the hospital gets in there. Air always goes out from an operating uh, theater. So likewise here, we can try and do that with a home. Just caveat up front, it's a little bit messy and I'm gonna show you the math on how we do this. So um, this is a, a video that I did about the studio that I'm sitting in right now and how we use the imbalances that are built into a balance system because of course you get supplies and exhaust and you put those in different rooms, then you can start to influence the physics of how your home is working. And I'm gonna have another video about um, why unbalanced across rooms is very important, i.e. you wouldn't put the ERV in the same room so that it's like giving to and taking from in the same room. Again, stay tuned for that. So here is how we're doing this in modern ventilation. Uh, the two airstreams, incoming airstream from outside and outgoing stale air are run by two different fans. And now we have access to what's called EC motors, which are just means that they're infinitely variable. You can actually turn a knob and it'll slow the fan down or speed the fan up. So we can now on several brands, including this Brone right here, uh, turn the incoming airstream to a different number than the outgoing airstream. And now this particular ERV that we're looking at right here blows 150 CFM total. Let's look at what is possible here. Let's imagine that if you use the ERV calculation, which is ASHRAE 62.2, which you can do on this red calc uh, website that I'm looking at right here, you'd use any of these ASHRAE 62.2s, depending on what uh, time frame you want to be. If you want a more modern calculation, you use the 2013, 2016. But that one is going to give you the ventilation target based on the building and the occupants. Then we also need to look at the exhaust because of course we're using these ERVs in modern airtight homes to exhaust from all the bathrooms. So we're gonna count those up. Let's just say for the, the sake of argument that we need 120 CFM of exhaust from all the bathrooms. And that's 25 CFM from each shower, 15 CFM from each uh, toilet. And if you hear Zender talk about it, they're talking about 20 CFM from either a toilet or a shower. And I think that it's strange to treat both of those things the same way. I think that they're very different, the amount of pollution that they would give to the home. So this is called the depressurization analysis tool from RedCalc. This is free to use. You can just go to the website that you see on the web, on the uh, video here in my address bar. So we can do, let's do my house. If we had a blower door test of 290, which is my home's blower door test for 45,000, 47,000 cubic feet of air within my 3,000 square foot home, um, and to depressurize or pressurize the home to three pascals, let's just say, we're gonna need 44 CFM of unbalanced. We're gonna need 44 more CFM coming in than going out. If I am gonna have my exhaust be 120, then that means that I'd have to have my supply be 164, which I can't do with that ERV that we were just looking at. I'm now gonna have to shop for an even bigger one, a 180 or a 200. And at that point, I don't have much boost capacity. So I'm going to have to buy like a bigger one in order to unbalance it that far and boost it. Uh, if we use a more typical home, let's say somebody that's got a blower door test of 1500, in order to produce a three pascal pressurization on the home, we're going to need 230 CFM of incoming air to be able to do that. At that point, 
I mean, there are very few ERVs in residential applications that blow 230 CFM at all, much less 230 CFM more on the incoming stream than whatever we have on the outgoing stream. So in a very leaky home, what we're talking about, like maybe a 3000 on the blower door, if we wanted to even induce, a, let's just say a two Pascal pressurization, which by the way, remember that when the wind blows, it's going to change you know, the, the pressurizations on the, the rooms in the windward side of the house versus the leeward side of the house is going to change when the doors are closed. But even just with a two Pascal pressurization, we're looking at 350 CFM. By the way, quick nerd note, to depressurize a home is generally easier with the way we construct homes in America than to pressurize a home. And it has to do with the way that we, um, the dampers that are in place on your kitchen exhaust hood, for example, close when you pull on it, but they opens when you push on it. Um, also house wrap, if you use building paper and house wrap, things like that, often they won't tape the bottom seam of that because it voids the warranty if you do. So that'll blow right open if you push on it, but not if you pull on it. So you can see that we have like kind of a difficult time doing the pressurization that we're talking about. Now, there is a way to uh, get around this. Air Cycler has very inexpensive components. Um, there, are, This is like anything that would be considered a supply ventilation. You can find things that like from April Air and from AC Infinity that just have supply fans that can just push into the home. Now, in order to have this work, like this one, for example, right here, that would go onto a duct that's between the return plenum and the outdoors. And you would potentially, if you want to constantly have control over the pressure in your home and constantly have it be a high pressure with respect to outside and high being just a, a Pascal or two, you would need to have your air handler running all the time and you need to have that thing open all the time. And again, remember that we're talking about these kinds of numbers. If you've got a two ton air conditioner, and you're trying to bring in an extra 350 CFM on a leaky house to pressurize the home because you're trying to like control the air quality inside of that leaky home to an extent that you have it, you know, definitely going to be clean. We're going to bring that in through a MERV 16 filter and we're going to blah, blah, blah. We're going to dehumidify it. I would say you, you want to plan to build a home for yourself. Like that is pretty hard to do. 350 CFM on top of your 800 CFM of two ton airflow is going to be upsizing your ductwork by 50% in order to get the air to move the right way and not build up a lot of pressure. So um, so these things can work. And this is a lot easier. You can see how inexpensive this is. We're going to talk about affordable makeup air options soon. And that's these guys are going to be a big part of that conversation. You can also use something like this. This is a, what's called a ventilating dehumidifier. That outdoor uh, 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 hole right here, this collar, is meant to go outdoors. This one is meant to come inside. Now, let's get nerdy about this. In this case, this unit, let's just take a look at the features here. Mm, let's see here. Specs. We want the actual specs. Okay. Airflow at zero inches of water column, which there's no way that you're going to have that happen, is 350. Really more likely you're going to have some back pressure because you're going to connect ductwork to this. You're not going to just set it up in the middle of the basement and have it run. We need the ductwork to at least come from outside. So at 2.2 inches of water column, which is probably pretty reasonable, we have less than 300 CFM of flow. We'll call it 280. Now, 280 is nice because we can divide that by four. And the reason that we want to divide it by four is that this is a 10 inch round duct. That is 78 square inches, roughly. This is a six inch round duct. That is approximately 25 square inches. It's 28, but what we're going to use a three to one. So we've got 75 square inches set and 25 square inches. That's a three parts air in the big collar, one part air in the small collar. So if this whole thing only blows 280 CFM, we divide that by four, which is 70 a piece. So what's coming from outside in this case is only 70 CFM. And then the remaining 210 CFM comes from this big collar that's coming from inside the house. So you can see that if we need to be able, like, let's just see what, uh, at what point 70 CFM is going to induce a two Pascal, we would need to have a blower door test number of 600 CFM 50 in order to get that to work with that 70 CFM pressurizing my home to two Pascals. So you can see that the, it, the math doesn't really add up 
And I have this happen a lot of times where people want a certain thing out of their home. Now that we're learning more and more about this from our channel, from Matt Reisinger's channel and, and many others, um, as we, you know, the information gets out there more and more, and I'm so excited about that. But there are some scenarios where you just can't do certain things in a home affordably because of other factors in the home, because remember, everything is a system. So just remind yourself of that. Learn to use these tools, these calculators that are online that are free. Really amazing. Um, please do make sure to comment, ask questions below if you have them. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.